the Qayyar dynasty, Persian, Selsela Yi Qayyar, also romanized as Gajar, Qajar, Qajar, etc., Azerbaijani. Kakala was a Persianized royal family of Turkic origin, which ruled Persia from 1785 to 1925. The state ruled by the dynasty was officially known as the Sublime State of Persia. The Qayyar family took full control of Iran in 1794, deposing Lotf Ali Khan, the last of the Zand dynasty and reasserted Iranian sovereignty over large parts of the Caucasus and Central Asia. In 1796, Muhammad Khan Qayyar seized Mashhad with ease, putting an end to the Afsharid dynasty, and Muhammad Khan was formally crowned as Shah after his punitive campaign against Iran's Georgian subjects in the North Caucasus and South Caucasus. The Qayyar dynasty eventually permanently lost many of Iran's integral areas which had made part of the concept of Iran for three centuries to the Russians in the course of the 19th century, comprising modern-day Georgia, Dagestan, Azerbaijan, and Armenia. Origins The Qayyar rulers were members of the Karagoth or Black Eye sect of the Qajars who themselves were members of the Karapar Park or Black Hats lineage of the Ohuz Turks. Qajars first settled during the Mongol period in the vicinity of Armenia and were among the seven key Zilbash tribes that supported the Safavids. The Safavids left Aran to local Turkic Khans and, in 1554 Ganja was governed by Shah Sultan Ziyadoglu Qayyar, whose family came to govern Karabakh in southern Aran. Qajars filled a number of diplomatic missions and governorships in the 16th-17th centuries for the Safavids. The Qajars were resettled by Shah Abbas I throughout Iran. The great number of them also settled in Asterabad near the southeastern corner of the Caspian Sea, and it would be this branch of Qajars that would rise to power. The immediate ancestor of the Qayyar dynasty, Shah Ali Khan of the Kavanlu of Ganja, married into the Kavanlu Qajars of Asterabad. His son, Fath Ali Khan, was a renowned military commander during the rule of the Safavid Shahs Sultan Hussein and Tarmas II. He was killed on the orders of Shah Nader Shah in 1726. Fath Ali Khan's son Muhammad Hassan Khan Qayyar was the father of Muhammad Khan Qayyar and Hossein Ali Khan, father of Baba Khan, the future Fath Ali Shah Qayyar. Muhammad Hassan Khan was killed on the orders of Karim Khan of the Zan dynasty. Within 126 years between the demise of the Safavid state and the rise of Naso al-Din Shah Qayyar, the Qajars had evolved from a shepherd warrior tribe with strongholds in northern Persia into a Persian dynasty with all the trappings of a Perso-Islamic monarchy. Rise to power, like virtually every dynasty that ruled Persia since the 11th century, the Qajars came to power with the backing of Turkic tribal forces while using educated Persians in their bureaucracy. In 1779 following the death of Karim Khan of the Zan dynasty, Muhammad Khan Qayyar, the leader of the Qajars, set out to reunify Iran. Muhammad Khan was known as one of the cruelest kings, even by the 18th century Iranian standards. In his quest for power, he raised cities, massacred entire populations, and blinded some 20,000 men in the city of Kerman because the local populace had chosen to defend the city against his siege. The Qayyar armies at that time were mostly composed of Turkomans and Georgian slaves. By 1794, Muhammad Khan had eliminated all his rivals, including Lotf Ali Khan, the last of the Zan dynasty. He re-established Persian control over the territories in the entire Caucasus. Aga Muhammad established his capital at Tehran, a village near the ruins of the ancient city of Rayy. In 1796, he was formally crowned as Shah. In 1797, Muhammad Khan Qayyar was assassinated in Shusha, the capital of Karabakh Khanate, and was succeeded by his nephew, Fath Ali Shah Qayyar. Reconquest of Georgia and the rest of the Caucasus 
Following the death of Nader Shah, the kingdoms of Kartli and Kakatai had broken free from Iranian rule, and were reunited in a personal union under the rule by King Heraclius II in 1762 in the kingdom of Kartli Kakatai. Between 1747 and 1795, Erekel was, therefore, by the turn of events in Iran following the ongoing turmoil there, able to maintain Georgia's autonomy through the Zand period. In 1783, Heraclius placed his kingdom under the protection of the Russian Empire in the Treaty of Georgiesk. In the last few decades of the 18th century, Georgia had become a more important element in Russo-Iranian relations than some provinces in northern mainland Persia, such as Mazandaran or even Gilan. Unlike Peter I, Catherine, the then ruling monarch of Russia, viewed Georgia as a pivot for her Caucasian policy, as Russia's new aspirations were to use it as a base of operations against both Iran and the Ottoman Empire both immediate bordering geopolitical rivals of Russia. On top of that, having another port on the Georgian coast of the Black Sea would be ideal. A limited Russian contingent of two infantry battalions with four artillery pieces arrived in Tbilisi in 1784, but was withdrawn. Despite the frantic protests of the Georgians, in 1787 as a new war against Ottoman Turkey had started on a different front. The consequences of these events came a few years later, when a new Iranian dynasty under the Qajars emerged victorious in the protracted power struggle in Persia. Their head, Agha Muhammad Khan, as his first objective, resolved to bring the Caucasus again fully under the Persian orbit. For Agha Muhammad Khan, the resubjugation and reintegration of Georgia into the Iranian Empire was part of the same process that had brought Shiraz. Isfahan, and Tabriz under his rule. He viewed, like the Safavids and Nader Shah before him, the territories no different than the territories in mainland Iran. Georgia was a province of Iran the same way Khorasan was. As the Cambridge history of Iran states, its permanent secession was inconceivable and had to be resisted in the same way as one would resist an attempt at the separation of Fazl Gilan. It was therefore natural for Aga Muhammad Khan to perform whatever necessary means in the Caucasus in order to subdue and reincorporate the recently lost regions following Nader Shah's death and the demise of the Zands including putting down what in Iranian eyes was seen as treason on the part of the Wali of Georgia, finding an interval of peace amid their own quarrels and with northern, western, and central Persia secure. The Persians demanded Heraclius II to renounce the treaty with Russia and to re-accept Persian suzerainty, in return for peace and the security of his kingdom. The Ottomans, Iran's neighboring rival, recognized the latter's rights over Kartli and Kakatai for the first time in four centuries. Heraclius appealed then to his theoretical protector, Empress Catherine II of Russia, asking for at least 3,000 Russian troops, but he was ignored leaving Georgia to fend off the Persian threat alone. Nevertheless, Heraclius II still rejected the Khan's ultimatum. Aga Muhammad Khan subsequently crossed the Aras River, and after a turn of events by which he gathered more support from his subordinate Khans of Erevan and Ganja, and having re-secured the territories up to including parts of Dagestan in the north and up to the westernmost border of modern-day Armenia in the West. He sent Heracol the last ultimatum, which he also declined, but sent couriers to St. Petersburg. Gudovich, who sat in Georgisk at the time, instructed Heracol to avoid expense and fuss, while Heracol, together with Solomon II and some Imeritians headed southwards of Tbilisi to fend off the Iranians. With half of the troops Aga Muhammad Khan crossed the Aras River with, he now marched directly upon Tbilisi, where it commenced into a huge battle between the Iranian and Georgian armies. Erekel had managed to mobilize some 5,000 troops, including some 2,000 from neighboring Emerita under its King Solomon II. The Georgians, hopelessly outnumbered, were eventually defeated despite stiff resistance.
In a few hours, the Iranian King Aga Muhammad Khan was in full control of the Georgian capital. The Persian army marched back laden with spoil and carrying off many thousands of captives. By this, after the conquest of Tbilisi and being in effective control of eastern Georgia, Aga Muhammad was formally crowned Shah in 1796 in the Mogan Plain. As the Cambridge History of Iran notes, Russia's client, Georgia, had been punished, and Russia's prestige, damaged, Heraclius II returned to Tbilisi to rebuild the city, but the destruction of his capital was a death blow to his hopes and projects. Upon learning of the fall of Tbilisi General Gudovich put the blame on the Georgians themselves. To restore Russian prestige, Catherine II declared war on Persia, upon the proposal of Gudovich, and sent an army under Valerian Zubov to the Qayyar possessions on April of that year, but the new Tsar Paul I, who succeeded Catherine in November, shortly recalled it. Aga Muhammad Shah was later assassinated while preparing a second expedition against Georgia in 1797 in Shusha reassessment of Iranian hegemony. Over Georgia did not last long. In 1799 the Russians marched into Tbilisi. Two years after Aga Muhammad Khan's death, the next two years were a time of muddle and confusion, and the weakened and devastated Georgian kingdom, with its capital half in ruins, was easily absorbed by Russia in 1801, as Iran could not permit or allow the cession of Transcaucasia and Dagestan, which had formed part of the concept of Iran for three centuries. It would also become the direct uplead to the wars of even several years later, namely the Russo-Persian War and Russo-Persian War, which would eventually prove for the irrevocable forced cession of aforementioned regions to Imperial Russia of the Gulistan and Turkmenche of 1813 and 1828 respectively, as the ancient ties could be severed by a superior force from outside. It was therefore also inevitable that Aga Muhammad Khan's successor, Fath Ali Shah would follow the same policy of restoring Iranian central authority north of the Eris and Karar rivers, wars with Russia and irrevocable loss of territories. In 1803, under Fath Ali Shah, the Qajars set out to fight against the Russian Empire in what was known as the Russo-Persian War of 1804-1813. Due to concerns about the Russian expansion into the Caucasus, most notably Georgia, which was an Iranian domain, although some of the Khanates of the Caucasus outside of Georgia were considered quasi-independent or semi-independent by the time of Russian expansion in the latest 19th century, and their entrance in Tbilisi. After the Russians annex the Iranian territories comprising eastern Georgia on 12 September 1801 during the rule of Tsar Alexander I, they, under General Pavel Sitsianov, stormed the Iranian town of Ganja in 1804, officially commencing the 1804-1814 war. This period marked the first major economic and military encroachments on Iranian interests during the colonial era. The Qayyar army suffered a major military defeat in the war and under the terms of the Treaty of Gulistan in 1813, Iran was forced to cede most of its Caucasian territories comprising modern-day Georgia, Dagestan, and most of Azerbaijan. The Second Russo-Persian War of the late 1820s ended even more disastrously for Qayyar Iran with temporary occupation of Tabriz and the signing of Treaty of Turkmenche in 1828, acknowledging Russian sovereignty over the entire South Caucasus and Dagestan, as well as therefore the ceding of what is nowadays Armenia and the remaining part of Republic of Azerbaijan. The new border between neighboring Russia and Iran were set at the Eris River. Iran had by these two treaties, in the course of the 19th century, irrevocably lost the territories which had formed part of the concept of Iran for the last three centuries. The area to the north of the River Eris, among which the territory of the contemporary Republic of Azerbaijan, eastern Georgia, Dagestan, and Armenia were Iranian territory until they were occupied by Russia in the course of the 19th century. 
Battle of Sultanabad, the 13th of February 1812, State Hermitage Museum, Storming of Lankaran, January 13, 1813, Franz Rubord, Battle of Elizabeth Pol, 1828. Franz Rubord, part of the collection of the Museum for History, Baku. Migration of Caucasian Muslims following the official losing of the aforementioned vast territories in the Caucasus. Major demographic shifts were bound to take place. Solidly Persian-speaking territories of Iran were lost, with all its inhabitants in it. Following the 1804-1814 war, but also put the 1826-1828 war which ceded the last territories, large migrations, so-called Caucasian Mahajirs, set off to migrate to mainland Iran. Some of these groups included the Irams, Narapipaks, Circassians, Shia Lesgans, and other Transcaucasian Muslims. Through the Battle of Ganja of 1804 during the Russo-Persian War, many thousands of Irams and Narapa Paks were settled in Tabriz. During the remaining part of the 1804-1813 war, as well as through the 1826-1828 war, the absolute bulk of the Irams and Narapa Paks that were still remaining in newly conquered Russian territories were settled in and migrated to soldiers. Others simply voluntarily refused to live under Christian Russian rule, and thus disembarked for Turkey or Iran. These migrations once again, towards Iran, included masses of Caucasian Azerbaijanis, other Transcaucasian Muslims, as well as many North Caucasian Muslims, such as Circassians, Shia Lesgans and Laks. Many of these migrants would prove to play a pivotal role in further Iranian history, as they formed most of the ranks of the Persian Cossack Brigade, which was also to be established in the late 19th century. The initial ranks of the brigade would be entirely composed of Circassians and other Caucasian Mahajirs. This brigade would prove decisive in the following decades to come in Qayyar history. Furthermore, the 1828 Treaty of Turkmenche included the official rights for the Russian Empire to encourage settling of Armenians from Iran in the newly conquered Russian territories. This also helped in changing the demographics of the regions considerably. The Treaty of Adrianople, concluded with Turkey in 1829 granted for more mass settling of Armenians in the newly incorporated territories. Slowly but surely, the number of Christians that formerly made out since the 17th century a relatively small minority in the region were starting to compose an ever-growing number of the total population, especially in the former Iranian-ruled Armenian and Georgian territories. Following the resettlement of Persian Armenians in the newly conquered Russian territories after 1828, Thus significant demographic shifts were bound to take place. The Armenian-American historian George Bornushan gives a summary of the ethnic makeup prior to the events of 1828 just for the territory of the Erevan administrative division as an example. After the incorporation of the Erevan Khanate into the Russian Empire, Muslim majority of the area gradually changed. At first the Armenians who were left captive were encouraged to return, as a result of which an estimated 57,000 Armenian refugees from Persia returned to the territory of the Erevan Khanates after 1828, while about 35,000 Muslims out total population of over 100,000 left the region. Fath Ali Shah's reign saw increased diplomatic contacts with the West and the beginning of intense European diplomatic rivalries over Iran. His grandson Mohammad Shah, who fell under the Russian influence and made two unsuccessful attempts to capture Herat, succeeded him in 1834. When Mohammad Shah died in 1848 the succession passed to his son Nasoeddin who proved to be the ablest and most successful of the Qayyar sovereigns.